Then he goes on to talk about how the biology of the human brain actually overlays with this. And so he does a brilliant job of weaving in the psychology and science that people are we're fascinated by it this these days. He goes on to talk about the brain and kind of why this works and how appealing to emotion really is the difference. And that's why the why works really, really well. He then goes on to tell the story of the Wright brothers and how there was Samuel Langley was in competition with the Wright brothers and he was very highly funded. He was in the media. He had hired the best minds, the best scientists. And, but the Wright brothers, they didn't, they didn't have a dime. They funded their efforts through working at their bike shop. And he goes on to say that, you know, Langley was in it for the money and Wright brothers weren't, they believed they, if they could establish flight, that they would change the world. And guess what they did actually. And so they got people behind them and people would work with blood, sweat and tears and behind the Wright brothers. And so that is another story and a really, really great story. He then goes on to, to talk about the, um, the tipping point theory, uses some things that I've seen before in other books and such. And honestly, if you watch the video, he drew it so fast. And I think, don't think he did that drawing that diagram justice. He, he kind of started losing me, but because I had read the book, the other book, then I, I, I kind of got it. But you'll, you'll notice that, um, I don't know, I, I, that, that wasn't for me a great use of that visual aid. And one other thing that happens in Simon's talk is that, his microphone throughout the whole first part of the talk is like buzzing and the sound quality is not that good. And about two thirds of the way through, somebody hands him a new mic and it's a wired mic and the sound gets better. So this is the second best, second most popular TED talk of all time. And it has poor audio. That say how brilliant his message is. I, I believe it does. He then goes on to talk about TiVo and how that was, that was a failure um, economically, but maybe one of the best products ever made. Again, dem demonstrating the point that they didn't have a strong why. And he actually does a fantastic job of saying, you know, what they're, how, how if they had taken a similar approach as Apple, that they might have actually had a much more tremendous commercial success with that product. Because we, we use TiVo right? We use TiVo as a verb. I'm going to TiVo something, even though it might not be on a TiVo, but on a DVR. So they had tremendous, you know, they had tremendous acceptance. It just, you know, not many people bought it. And then he goes on to talk about Martin Luther King and how 250,000 people showed up for one of his, one of his big speeches. There were no invitations. There was no Evite at the time right? There's no online registration, but a quarter of a million people showed up for that talk. The reason being that, that and there's other people, other orators who were just as good. Uh, but really it's because, you know, he, he, I love this. I love this quote. He says, you know, Martin Luther King said, I have a dream, not I have a plan. So, you know, I, I think he really taps into people who are the dreamers, those people who are movement oriented. And they said, you know, he makes the point that zero of the people showed up for Martin Luther King. They showed up for themselves because they wanted to be associated with that feeling. They wanted to be associated with that why. They were aligned with that why. So, you know, um, leaders are those who inspire is kind of how he ends everything. His call to action is um, to lead with our why and to in the things that we do to, to lead with our why. So, and I thought his call to action maybe, maybe wasn't the, maybe wasn't the strongest, but, and so when, when I look back at, what I think he would really, really unbelievable. And the reason I think his talk is so powerful is that his message was, was really inspiring that we all know, we all have our whys and we all align to certain whys. 
And so we could all connect to that. Also, he is a genius at the, the skill of being commanding. Watch the video. He's got charisma. He leans forward. He established himself as an unbelievable expert, and he really draws you into that story. He talks extremely fast, and I think that is another part of his getting command. So I, uh, I actually look at a bunch of different things when I look at these talks. I've come up with a number of different points and where I think his, uh, his talk is really, really strong. So I'm just going to run through these things and you know, again, these are just my opinion. So on the opening, I would give him a, a three out of five. It was good. He got through it quickly. Kind of, kind of lost me a little bit, but he recovered pretty quickly. Got right to the problem. I give him five out of five. He states the problem very, very clearly. Stories. I give him a five. His stories were fantastic. They were aligned. They were perfectly chosen, strategically chosen to get a great audience. The call to action. I would give him a three. I, I didn't necessarily feel like I want to get out of my chair and, and do something uh, right away. Humor, I give him a two. He had a couple of chuckles in there, but he didn't really put a lot of effort into generating human e engagement. I didn't see him use a lot of techniques to engage the audience. He really just commanded and told the audience. So in terms of engagement, I gave him a two out of five. Challenging beliefs, I gave him a five out of five. He challenged our beliefs. Now, all the best leaders do exactly opposite of everybody else. Okay, so we did a great job of challenging our beliefs. Personal story, I'd give him two out of five. Really didn't bring, him, bring us to, to know and like him very much. He commanded us with his charisma. His body language, I would give him a, a three out of five. It wasn't distracting, but it really didn't necessarily, he didn't do anything that really made me feel like it added uh, a whole lot. His voice tone was very good. He's very commanding. He used inflection. He used pacing and pause and all those great things. On visual aids, I would give him a three. He used the flip chart effectively. It wasn't distracting. Helped him get his point across. And so there, there you have it. There's my, you, you get to, you got to hear a little bit about my process and, and how I think about speakers when I, when I watch them. I would encourage you to watch this video. It's really, really good, and you'll learn some things, and you'll learn how you'll get to see firsthand how somebody who uses flip charts and has poor sound quality, how they get to be the second most popular TED Talk of all time. All right, well, I hope you found this interesting. I hope you found this enjoyable. I just groove out on this stuff all, all day and all night. So if you liked this, if you'd like to see more of this, Leave me a comment saying, yes, Don, this was really, really cool. I want more. If not, well, don't. And I probably won't do it anymore. I'm going to continue to, to do this for my own learning, but I thought I would just share what's, what goes through my mind when I look at speakers and, and, and share it with you. All right. Well, this is Don. Uh, peace out.